What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. By goal. I pronounce you. By wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Well, hey, kids. I almost said that it was Monday, but if you listen to my show, you already know that I'm constantly doing that, which kind of sucks because I'm always a day late in a dollar short, so to speak. So, hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. It's the start of a new week, almost December 1st, almost three weeks away from Christmas, and oh, my God, I better start my damn shopping soon. Hi, to everybody. I'm very excited. Um, I have four shows this week, actually, so I'm, I'm super, super excited. Today's guest in particular, Danny Sylvester, is one of my favorites of the week. First of all, he's a musician, and if you listen to my show, you already know that I always get excited when I'm interviewing musicians, especially ones of this caliber who do so much in so many different mainstreams, so that's very exciting to me. Don't want to forget to remind everybody that... Um, after today's show, tomorrow, real quickly, in case you didn't get a chance to take a look at my lineup this week, uh, obviously tomorrow, 5 o'clock Central Standard Time, Scott H. Silverman visits the show. CNN Hero Award recipient, long, long time uh, sobriety, uh, and to the tune of 33 years, not to mention the fact he's helped us start two recovery groups. He's written a book that we're going to be talking about tomorrow, which I'm so excited about. So, 5 o'clock Central Standard Time tomorrow, Thursday, 1 o'clock, excuse me, 1 o'clock, I can't read today, 4 o'clock Central Standard Time. Leonard Goffey will be coming on the show. Not only is he a publicist friend of mine, but he's also taken large, large leaps, I should say, in the world of attempting to help with cat rescue. He worked two years for an organization in Florida to help save and rescue animals. And he has now started himself an old cat clothing line, in which case he's going to send some of the proceeds back to cat rescue and adoption. So tune in at 4 o'clock Thursday, Central Standard Time. Friday, we're running out the rest of the week with Katie Barberi. Katie is, to those that may not know, she's infamous for what they call telenovas. And what those are, of course, more like Latin slash Mexican soap operas that play out of the country. But very exciting. They have this really super neat concept that's coming up. We're going to be talking about a scrapple net graphic novel series that they're translating actually into a production. So I'm really excited to talk to her about that. General Hospital, going to the Academy Awards. Oh, my gosh, so exciting. So without further ado. My wonderful guest, Danny, is on the line. Let's not keep him waiting, and let's get the show started. Is Hello? this Danny Sylvester? Hello? Yes, it is. How are you? Hi. Oh, my gosh. You sound so timid in comparison to your picture. I was nervous. <laughs> you look larger than life <laughs> in your picture, and I'm like, this dude's going to eat me for breakfast. Hi. <laughs> you I, do. I, I, I think this is the, the... The sound and the level on my phone, I guess it's not the best, so I'm having a bit of a hard time. That's oh, right. no, no, no. It's just, you know how you ever look at a picture of somebody, like if someone who's performing, whether it's like an actor or let's say a musician in your case, and you look at them and you're like, oh, my gosh, they have such a presence about them. You know what I mean? You're energetic and eclectic, and you, and you just you have a lot of, there's a, a lot of hype around you. So now that oh, you're talking, oh. you, gosh, you sound like you're 25 years old and young and Canadian. <laughs> that's not a bad thing. I wish I was. That isn't. Well, good. We're off to a nice flying start here. Wonderful. Now some of the anxiety is gone. I have to start off by telling you this because I tell all my Canadians this. You guys got beat with that beauty stick. I don't know what it is with you people, but you're all good looking. Did you know that? Every oh, one of you. Right. <laughs> and I'm not lying to you. No, seriously. I mean, try to find an ugly Canadian and then call me back because seriously, it doesn't happen. There are no ugly Canadians in this world. I'm serious, dude. I mean, most of the people that I adore from Canada, they're all hot. I'm not going to lie about that. I'm like, why the hell am I living in Wisconsin? Just saying. So I wanted to start off with that. You're quite welcome, actually. And there's a lot to talk about with you. So I'm like really super excited. So we're going to talk about all sorts of different things. I like to try to jump around and I like my audience to kind of find out about the, the me side of you, so to speak, before they find out about the performer and the musician, et cetera. So the first thing I want to ask you, this is like the most important question of the whole interview. If you don't get this right, you're out of luck. Are you sitting down? Okay. I am sitting down. Okay, folks. Good. It would appear that this fine gentleman has a few different talents up his sleeve. And one of them, the one that I'm most concerned about, because if you follow me on Facebook or if you literally follow me in life, you already know this is like a huge thing in my life. So give it up. How do you make homemade wine? Because I hear you make homemade wine. I was so excited. I was oh, like, you oh. make homemade wine. <laughs> so how do you make homemade wine? Of course I do. I'm a journalist. Uh-huh. I, 
I started uh, doing a beer at first, and uh, I guess when I met my wife, well, she was drinking wine, and I'm like, I got acquainted uh, with wine a bit, a bit more. And uh-huh. I started uh, making wine for now. It's just we actually there's many different ways of making wine, but I do the lazy way. I go buy the wine, and it's already <laughs> in two. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I do it the lazy way. <laughs> Don't say that on air. I'm lazy. It's okay. <laughs> No, That's honestly, I I have many friends who like they do they make like homemade beer and they make you know different alcohol things and all that good jazz and stuff and, and that's all fine and good but I realize it can be relatively complex so that's why I guess I was just wondering if you have like a trial and error method or a suggestion let's say because I'd like to try it actually. Yeah, it's it's, it's very nice the one we do actually and uh, it doesn't sit for too long. That's the only uh, problem there is because it costs pretty cheap. But uh, no, it takes about a month and a half I guess and you can start it. Uh, you can start drinking it right after. It doesn't need to be aged too much. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's quite oh, my easy. gosh. I did yeah. not know that. My goodness gracious. I think so, look starting at that. From, uh, yeah, starting from scratch with the uh, race would be too much of a hard job, so it didn't take too long. Oh, no kidding. No, sure. and I get that, yeah. obviously. Yeah, I, and that always intrigues me because I'm like, oh, my gosh, look at that. Because I think oftentimes, and I say this all the time when I interview actors, too, or directors, Everybody thinks that you're superhuman, meaning that you don't do normal things. But obviously, Danny does do normal things. Like, for instance, I know that you've only been married for a year. Oh, see, romance on the show. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about your wife, because we all want to know, because you're good looking. So, yeah, anybody that had any idea of dating him, out the window. Okay, so back to your wife, because we like to clear that up right away. So, tell us about your wife. Is she a creative? Is she a musician? Is she in the field? She's actually not, no. She uh, just works oh. a government job, and she's uh, well. She's kind of an artiste in a way. She's uh, studying actually to be a home designer and home oh, nice. stages. So okay, that's got what it. She's doing at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's okay. uh, doing Wonderful. very well in her course. But she, she, okay. yeah, she's got some, uh, I guess, artistry in that way. I guess you, you could say. Oh goodness! Now tell me something, because this, this always intrigues me. Because everybody always takes this differently. Obviously, of course, her husband is a musician, and he's a big deal. He's getting success, and he's getting noticed and recognized. How does she take to that? You know, because life, you know, as we all know, within the course of a year, you can go from being a relatively well-known musician to being a popular musician. So, how does she balance, uh, you know, the home Danny with the guy that's out and about and on the public stage and doing all sorts of things? I mean, how is that for her? Let's say, have you guys made that? Okay balance we have made that balance and she has uh, made that balance very well actually she's you know it's all about trust too eh? you're always out and you're always meeting new people and it's, it's if, if you don't have a relation built on trust well it's not going to go anywhere in anything you do anyways but uh, she tries to come out to the shows as much as she can and uh, no we, we make it work you don't have a daughter that's 18 years old, actually, and uh, sometimes they have a movie night here alone uh, by themselves. Oh, my gosh, look at that, yeah. and that works out so nicely. I know. Of course, that, that is really super neat. Now, um, I'm going to gather that, obviously, I'm assuming that you don't have children, correct? Just checking. No, I do have a children, yeah. okay. Eight, 18-year-old daughter, oh. yeah. That's kind of what I thought. Now, my question to you is this, obviously. Um when you're up and about and you're doing your music and such, because, of course, you started writing at a relatively young age. So I'm writing at age 10 mm-hmm. to be exact, actually, and that's relatively young. So as we age and as we mature, of course, we notice that the, the quality and, and the, the way and the process that we do our art changes a little bit. So now, of course, so you, you have a child and you have a wife. Tell me, has that helped to try to kind of formulate your words for you a little bit better, meaning are you more inspired by – the domestic portions of your life versus some of the other things? Because I notice that as people, like, they get married, they have children, that kind of stuff. It kind of changes the dynamic of how they put together their pieces of art, so to speak. Make sense? Yes. Yes, yes, it does make sense. It's a lot about uh, uh, getting older and wiser, as they say. But uh, okay. it does inspire. But uh, the, the, it's all the, the stuff that's that has happened to you and the, the stuff that is happening in the at the present and the, the, the stuff you can hope for the future. I guess it's a mix of everything when you, and I'm at the point that I can uh, start maybe explaining a bit better what I'm trying to say and expressing my feelings okay. a bit better because younger, <laughs> I guess, your feelings are like, hey, you're all over the place. But now, yeah, it's, it's getting easier. 
Oh, definitely, without a doubt, I presume so. Now, back to that, because we had started with that. So songwriting at age 10, because I have a child that literally is 10 years old. And Tristan came home today and was like, hey, honey, let's write a song. He'd look at me and be like, um, can we use YouTube? And can we somehow do video games while we're doing this? So, of course, you can see that they're not quite as geared to that. So, so at age 10, what made you intrigued or, should I say, inspired to want to start writing songs so early? Uh, but we had a lot of musicians in my family already, none of which were okay. really writing their own songs, you know, doing covers. And I was pretty much raised on country. And okay. I think at, at eight, nine years old, I started to discover uh, Mr. John Fogarty, CCR. And oh, yeah. Uh, kind of inspired me to listen to how we started at a young age. Okay. And I guess it, it, went, on, it went on from there. I started to put write stuff together, and I was in a couple of plays at school, and I started to, you know, evolve with playing guitar, and maybe I can put my own lyrics to a sheet, you know, and it went that way, I guess. Oh, my gosh, and look at that. Now, did you feel somewhat, I don't want to say pressure, but I know that I've talked to other family members where, or interviewed other people, rather, where when you have a long generational line of individuals who make music their living, Obviously, it's kind of expected that you would go into a field like that. So was it kind of hand-carved for you, or did you naturally kind of feel like you gravitated towards that? I, yeah, I kind of felt like it's a, yeah, it was not uh, an easy road. Just, and I guess it's not an easy road for anybody anyways. Nothing's paid for anybody, sure. but I guess it's sure. hard work that, that pays off. And uh, uh, like I said, my surroundings right now, I have a bunch of good people working with me. I have a good consultant out of Toronto which is helping me a lot, and right. it's a learning experience, I guess. Yeah, you just, yeah, surrounding yourself you learn with people keep going. is one of the best. Yeah. Amen yeah. to that one, exactly. Now, I'm, I'm yeah. sitting here, and I'm listening to you, and I'm sure my audience is thinking the same thing. In case folks you did not know, Danny is, was born in Quebec, which, of course, makes him Canadian. But I'm sitting here, and I'm listening to you, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, he's probably from, like, Fargo, North Dakota, or something like that. It's the accent. I can't, You don't sound Canadian. Is that bad to say? <laughs> I'm like, I feel bad. Like, no. I'm telling you, it doesn't sound like him. So what the heck's up with that accent you got going on there? Um, is that some kind of – it ain't New York, I can tell you that, and it ain't Jersey either. So I'm thinking, is that what Canadians sound like? Because all the other ones I interviewed don't sound anything like you. <laughs> so have you trained yourself well, okay. to be different? <laughs> no, it's not Honest bad to God. Yeah. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, I've, did, I've had people uh, – Telling me that I was, uh, I think it was a Nova Scotia accent. So it's kind of a right. Cajun accent, I guess. Correct. And that's no, one of the things no. that I was thinking about. And I didn't know. Have you, you spent, have you spent your whole life in Canada? Or you were born there and then you left and then came back? Or well, has there been any kind of transition where you lived in other city, cities or, or toured around and did any of that stuff in your life? No, I, I always lived in Canada and uh, pretty relatively uh, close to the. the the same hometown that I was, that I, that I was born in. I, mm-hmm. I have family down in the States, in Pennsylvania. And okay. uh, they, they, yeah, no, I traveled a bit, but never uh, lived anywhere else in Canada. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. And Canada is an absolutely beautiful place, folks. In fact, I'm due to be actually visiting it in the very near future for the first time. And I'm so excited because many of my loved ones are there. I actually have an entire radio show dedicated to Canadians because I have a huge admiration for Canadians, and not just musicians, actors, the whole nine yards, and it's be- absolutely beautiful country. Now, I have to ask you, and this is the kind of negative side of Danny, so we'll just brush past it quickly, but we're going to say that Danny's also a hunter, apparently. Not real pleased about that one. So explain that to me. I- I've always wanted to ask somebody who comes to my show this. I used to be married to a man who was a hunter. And God love you. You know what I mean? If that's what does it for you, that's terrific. But I just, I want to understand this. So I want somebody like you, maybe you could explain this to me. Is the hunting appealing to you because it is all about the hunt and then once you get it, you're satisfied? Or You know, because these are some really beautiful animals. So I guess I should ask you what you hunt and what kind of lures you to that. Because I I, I guess I just don't get it. I'm like, why do these people hunt? What the heck's up with that? Uh, very tough question, especially on the air. <laughs> <laughs> well, just be honest, Danny. Come on, own your talents. No, Obviously, you I'm like it. Honest. I'll be honest with you guys. No, it's it's not just about the the, uh, the kill and the, uh, the 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 thrill and everything. It's it's actually about spending time in the woods with family because I grew up sure. hunting. So, of course, I'm going to wind up probably hunting compared to somebody else that 
was never, you know, has never hunted before, fished or whatever. But you no, know, gotcha. it's uh, about spending time with family and just being out in the open in the woods. It's nice. But oh, of course, is, when you get your trophy buck or, well, it makes it better, you know. Oh, I bet. I imagine so. And do you do just deer mm-hmm. alone, or do you like? I know some people do bow hunting, or they do other kind of stuff. Is it just circulated to one for you, or is it more What's than up, that? Sorry, no, that's okay. Do, but, so you're just a deer hunter, or do you do the other ones? Like, like some people do birds, or some people like there's other various forms of hunting, right? Not just circulated yeah, to one uh, thing. No, I do uh, moose hunting as well. It's been uh, like this year's. I think it was over 20 years that I haven't uh, hunted moose, and we had my uncle that we haven't hunted with him since over 20 years, actually. So I think the last oh time I goodness. hunted with him was, was from – yeah, so we started that, uh, that this year. And usually, okay. no, we just hunt uh, pretty much deer. My brother, which is a big, big fan of hunting, too, is uh, hunts pretty much everything. Turkey. Oh, my gosh. And, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. And Fowl, apparently – All kinds you- of – so you hunt everything but two-legged deer, apparently, because you've already caught your two-legged. Oh, that yes, was yes, cute. Yes, I'm lucky. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of us aren't so lucky, Danny, so thanks a lot. Um, okay, so I want to ask you, um, and I think this is so neat because I'm sure the listening audience doesn't know this, but back in 2005, you had received a boxing medal from the Quebec uh, Silver Gloves Championship. So I want you to talk a little bit about your experiences. What, what kind of brought you into boxing, um, how successful you became at it. Obviously, you must have been a good one because clearly you won the boxing medal. But most importantly, um, are you still involved in it at this point in time because you have a lot going on with the music side of things? Yeah, no, I'm not uh, really – I still train pretty much, uh, I would say, four to five times a week. Uh, but to be involved as much as I was before, no. I've, uh, okay. trained, people, I've trained people as well. Uh, my brother – uh, still goes to Thailand, and he still fights. He's a champion of the world. Like uh, I think he's got like eight belts now. So oh, it's, nice. it's, it's in our family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in uh, Muay Thai champion. But no, me, uh, that part of my life, I guess it's uh, done and over with. I, like I said, I still train, but my music now is the main focus for me. And oh, and, that's and I can what understand I want to that completely. Focus. And gotcha. it, it, it's not yeah. as hard on the, uh, the body and the face, as you would say. You are not lying, right? I'm telling you. I, I, I just, I literally just introduced my two boys to the Rocky series because they had never seen, you know, the Ro- Rocky. Obviously, I'm sure we all know who Rocky Balboa is. Oh yeah, clearly. And all this good jazz, and we're so excited because they were like, "Oh my gosh, they, they thought this was so cool that these guys box." And I'm like, "Yeah, right." I've talked to people besides yourself that have boxed before, and I'm like, "Honey, why don't you listen to one of my interviews?" I'm like, "Just promise, mom, you'll never box." Oh my god, that stuff looks so dangerous to begin with, and it's just, you know. I admire anybody that has enough courage to walk into a ring and to pursue something that they love, even if it means literal physical pain to them. I think that that's hugely admirable and awesome. And now that I've explained why you have that stuff on your Facebook, because folks, if you go on his Facebook page, every every how many pages down the road, you're going to see another boxing thing. And I'm like, what's up with this guy? Do you like boxing all the time or is this a family thing? So I had to get to the bottom of that. So thank you for clearing that up. I appreciate that. No problem. Now, no problem one of the things that you've talked about, and, and I can totally see why I've actually heard this before, is you've actually been cited as stating that you have been inspired by the likes of someone such as Garth Brooks, um, and I'm assuming that you've had some familial influences too. So talk to me a little bit about some of your core influences as it relates to music and who out there would you love to partner with? If you were given the opportunity to play on stage with someone and partner with them, who might that be? Uh, my, yeah, my past influences a lot, like I said uh, earlier in the interview, was uh, Mr. John Fogarty. I listened to right. a lot of Hank Williams Jr. when I was young. Grew up with that, actually. And I was nice. always introduced uh, uh, yeah, by uh, my uh, American cousins out in Pennsylvania. And, uh, oh, my gosh. Introduced us to, yeah, yeah, Hank Williams Jr. But like I said, I had a family. I, I think we're over close to 15 musicians and they were always okay. playing all kinds of stuff, you know, from the youngest to the oldest. So you you get sure. a glimpse of all kinds of music, different music. And uh, my big influence, like I said, was uh, CCR. And if I would have to partner with somebody on the stage, would be maybe something like a Keith Urban. 
Oh, yeah. right. Isn't he amazing? Yeah. Or like Tim McGraw, oh. I saw in public, like him at Faith Hill. Oh, my God, what a performance. <gasps> Those two are over the top, yeah. like off the chain. Oh, my goodness gracious. Look at that. Um, yeah. So I have to ask right. you because – oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say they're actually all awesome people when you, you meet them and you talk to them and you see them talk on the, the shows and stuff. You can already tell they're right. you know, down to earth people. Makes it better. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. What? What? Out of doubt. So I have to get your assessment of this because I'm not as big of a country music fan of say, as most people are. So I'm curious to get your take on, you know, you talked about like, for instance, Hank, the generation of Hank Williams and some of the older type country music people that are out there versus the likes of today, for instance. And talk to me a little bit about mm-hmm. it. Have you seen a, a transition at all in terms of country, meaning like, for instance, when we talk about somebody like a Daniel Salvestri, you're a combination of country and rock. And so are you seeing the trend in country music today is kind of gravitating a little bit away from the old traditional country type music and integration of more pop and rock, do you think? I, I think, yeah, I would have to agree with you on that. I think it's just evolving to, to, to something different, like all the, the stuff that has evolved from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s on, you know, it's, it's, it's just mm-hmm. music is always evolving and it's, it's always going to change. And I think if you get the, the, the how can I put it, the, 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 the right people and the right artists for different type of categories that you're going to go on, they can make it right. work. And that's, that's when you yeah. see like a Keith Urban who's a, a bit more, his, trans, his transition has been a, a bit more to pop. And you, you right. still get that Jason Aldean who's starting to go really rock now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I know exactly what you're think. talking about, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and change I think it's transitioned. Good. And it is good. I mean, definitely so. I, I have to say that sometimes change can be a refre- it can be refreshing in terms of not. And I love my older classes, hungry. I'm not gonna lie about that. But sometimes just a little bit of a tweaking or a little bit of a modification never hurt anybody. Clearly, without a doubt. Yeah. So I agree with yeah. you there as far as that goes. Now. I understand that you recently attended the Celebrate Summer Fair. You actually performed the capac- – or I should say, you were actually judging some music live and on site. What kind of experience was that for you? Is that the first time you've done that something was, like that before? It actually was the first time I did that, and it was a lot of fun, uh, especially when you're usually on stage and you you don't really get <laughs> – uh, you have to say, you judge yourself a bit, but it's not like judging somebody. And, it, and I found that hard a bit because right. you don't want to be – you know, you don't want to be mean either, and you want to get some uh, right. uh, insightful uh, criticism, you know. But uh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's, I gotta say I liked it, and uh, uh, the, the winners and actually all the uh, uh, talent that was up there was very good, very very good. And so it was, it was tough at the end to choose which one was going to be the winner, and I think we put a fourth one in there that actually did a great job. And we instead of having three winners, well, we put another one in there just to to be fair, you know. Yeah. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. In fact, I was just going to ask you, in your opinion. What do you believe or what do you define as true talent when it comes to playing music? What sort of components do you look for? And I ask that because a lot of times the people that are listening in are younger or starting off on their journey in music, et cetera. So what do you think are the pertinent points that need to be there for a song to be that magical or that powerful or that impressive? What needs to be there? Well, you, anybody can take a song and make it to its, you know, make it, make it as its own, but the, the, the thing I always rely on me, it's energy. And it doesn't matter where you go, which song you're playing, I think it's the energy between you and the crowd will make a mm-hmm. difference compared to somebody who's just sitting there and playing his music. I know it's interaction and everything, but the energy, it's, 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 it's kind of hard to explain, actually, because you see some people doing covers, and uh, the, the, the energy they give to the crowd and to the whichever venue they're playing, you still feel it when you're sitting down and they, they, they make, they take the song and they make it to their own, you know, I think it's energy yep. has a lot to do with that. Yep. Oh, I agree with you. 150%. That's absolutely awesome. Now on the flip side of the fence, I want to let people know this couple of things that you've done before. And I have a question relative to this three different things. Um, first of all, I know in the past that you've assisted to raising money for the boys and girls club, you were involved in a fundraiser fundraiser for baby Evelyn to be exact. And recently, you also did the Art of Hope in 2016, which benefited the Ottawa Regional Cancer Foundation. So two questions relative to your charity involvement. For one, why, 
in your opinion, why is it that you step up and, and take your time and your talent to lend to charity? And then second of all, do you have your own personal charities that you advocate or are you going to be doing or working with someone in the future or partnering with, I should say, relative to your music? I, I think everybody needs help, whether it's me, whether it's you. Everybody needs help in this world, and if you can give a bit of your time to make something, uh, make a difference in, in that cause, even if it's playing music, uh, serving food, whatever you do. Uh, sure. I think for me it's very important to help, and I am a helping person because I help my family, I help my friends, and do, doing these causes just – music to me is so much fun, and especially putting it, putting that on top with a cause. Well, there you go. It's a combination that – for me, I can't lose, you know. Awesome. Now, do you have – are you currently partnered with a charity, per se, or are there ones that are personally close to you that you might want to work with, you think, in the future? Uh, yeah, maybe Chio again would be uh, one of those because my daughter actually has a uh, muscular dystrophy. Oh, goodness. So Chio, yes, 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 yes. I would uh, partner up with them and maybe do another okay. Chio show for sure, yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, yes, I, I tend to think that oftentimes when our children are affected by things, it kind of hits home on such a personal level that you're, you, it's without a doubt the top there. Okay, now I want to talk a bit about your CD, Crossover Life. Tell, tell the audience a bit about when you produced Crossover Life, and then talk to me a little bit about how that music varies from something such as like your tailgate games song. Tell me how your music has transitioned and what sort of material is in Crossover Life. And how long did it take you to make that, by the way? Uh, Crossover Life, I guess it took us, I think it was back in 2010, 2000. Okay. I think it's around that time. Uh, okay. It didn't take us, it, I guess it took us about six months to do. Uh, I went down to Toronto with this uh, awesome producer, Mr. Brian Gagnon. Okay. And uh, so we, we did one track. Uh, came back to my hometown, kept kept to the music and kept writing and stuff like that. When I had enough songs for a CD, I sent everything over and he produced it with me. And I went down and I sang, I think, 11 songs that day and all the back vocals on it. So that that was a big job for me that oh day. Oh, my That's when he gosh. Told me, yeah. He told me, you're a machine, Dan. He said, you're a studio machine. But it was lots of fun, good experience for me. Uh, it, okay. The transition, I guess, uh, there was always a little bit of, country in my stuff but that 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 seed was a bit more towards the rock uh music and the i don't know the transition just like i said earlier i got older and the uh, taste change and i'm like i'm listening to country a lot more than i used to i'm like you know what maybe mm-hmm. i should try something different and i did and the sure. songs came out of it Oh, my gosh, look at that. Yeah, that was going to be one of my questions, actually, is do you think over the course of time that you might transgress a bit and just kind of go into a different theme, meaning if you would try more of a rock sound and more of a blues sound, is that something that you might foresee in the future might happen? It, it might. I, I think that the country and rock are closer, so I don't know okay. about blues and stuff, but the country and rock sure. is, is very uh, close together, so for me... Uh, mixing one or another, I don't see a big difference in it, so it comes easier as writing and actually sure. producing music, you know. And yeah, even yeah. Uh, no, I, okay. actually, my new my new single that's coming out, it, it has got a lot of rock in it too, you know. Oh my gosh, look at that! Now, is, are you referring to quit? Because I know that you're about to head into the studio relatively soon to to cut that, right? That's your next song. Yes, I quit. okay. Yes. yes, that's what I thought. Interesting mm-hmm. title, by the way. I loved it. I was like, what the heck does he mean by that? I quit would be about. (laughs) I've done him over. Story, it's like it's yeah. (laughs) It's like you're you're tired of the city life, and uh, some people get tired of their jobs and tired of their bosses, and you you quit. You you go back to your roots, and you go back to you know what you know. So I think that's what that story is going to tell people. Yeah. You betcha. Now, of course, obviously, I want to talk a bit about the transition. And again, uh, to those of you that are listening that are considering a career such as this, for instance. Now, in your life, Danny, obviously, you're involved in the writing component, of course, singing and doing gigs and participating in other events and things like that. So your life is pretty busy and inundated with music, which is what you love. Now, um, what I want you to address, if you would, to the people that might be out there and considering this 
how much of that time are you now spending? Uh, you know, is it an adjustment for you? Because are, I'm assuming that when you're out and about, people are becoming, you're becoming more recognizable to folks. You're not necessarily in the same vein that you used to be anymore. And so is this kind of a surreal feeling for you? Because it seems like, you know, you're not walking around with this big celebrity hat on your head and being like, yeah, I'm the shit, so to speak. So, I mean, I bet this takes some time to kind of shift into um, becoming this personality that people recognize. Yes, I, I would say always be true to yourself. That's the first thing. And I think it just progresses. Like like I said earlier, it's to surround yourself with good people. Always, oh, always, definitely. always. Yeah, be yourself and uh, listen to your heart. And the, 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 if you're uh, somebody that can put, uh, can write well and can do some good music, uh, you will come up with something and you, you can't quit. Because there's going to be a lot of doors shutting in your face, so you just got to keep oh, no pushing kidding. forward. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and no, that has to be difficult. It 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 is it is it is. You can't uh, always look for the positive. If you start looking for the negative and always, oh, I should have done that, should have done. That. Keep just keep on your your track, you know. Keep on your road, and something will come out of it. You keep meeting people, <laughs> you, you know. That's just the way it is. Oh, I betcha, obviously. And that's the other thing we talk about on the show. And I guess if you had a tip out there, if someone is a newbie or someone is first starting out, and obviously, as you just mentioned, you hit it right on the head, which is, you know, rejection can be your number one best friend at times because you feel like you're being told no, 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 constantly all the time. So therefore, how do you, how do you cope with that? How do you, Danny, cope with that? If somebody comes to you and says, you know what, you're not my cup of tea, I'm not interested, da, 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 da. How do you keep back, get, how do you keep getting back up on your feet and saying, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. How does that work for you? Uh, I got a good wife and a good mom. That's the first thing. <laughs> that's awesome. But, yeah, but that's it is the, the, the truth, though. Uh, without them, I wouldn't, you know, go anywhere. I wouldn't keep pushing like this. The, the, the support that I have from these people, it's, it's unreal. My brothers, everybody's always out there to the, to the shows. And uh, I think, too, uh, always being like there's always going to be rejection like you said I think uh, mm-hmm. as a boxer I can uh, metaphor take punches but I was always like that in the mm-hmm. ring I would never quit and I'm here to show the big boys that I am going to spit and I have a voice and I have uh, good songs and you're going to hear them. <laughs> that's what I that's how I you know that's how I think no I'm- I know exactly what you're talking about. I do. And that's awesome advice because it's tough. I mean, I'm a professional writer and I know I've been told about 18,000 times, you're no good, you're no good, you're no good. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to do it anyways. And and sometimes it just takes patience, persistence. Um, Keep telling yourself in that mirror, no matter how hard it is, you're going to do well. You're going to do well no matter what. And sometimes, well, and look, you need a classic example of this, clearly. Now let me tell you why. And listen to this, folks. 2014, he was first place at the Landmark Event Showcase in Ottawa. 2015, he was nominated for a Grammy for Best Country Solo Performance for his Tailgate songs. And in 2016, he was named Best Country Song by the Academia Music Awards, among countless other accolades, I have to say. He's also played the CCMAs. He was just at the Indie Week in Toronto. Also, he played the Carlton Raceway Casino in Ottawa. Um, I wanted to ask you a couple questions about that. Now, you primarily play in Canada. Have you extended out? Because I honestly couldn't find out if you extended out and have played in other cities or other countries, et cetera. Is that, are you going to be doing a mini tour? Can we expect something like that? Uh, it's, it's all in the process right now. Uh, okay. Like I have, like I mentioned, I'm, I'm talking with my consultant. And we're just, it's, you have to have a big plan in the back of everything. Everything has to be planned, right. structured. And at the moment, we're focusing now on the couple of songs that are coming up. So I'm going to go back in the studio. And when I start to have enough uh, material, the country material and stuff like that, because now that I'm pushing more for that. And okay. And we'll take it from there. We'll take it from there after, you know. One step at a time. Oh, of course. And, uh, uh, yeah. If you run, you sometimes you fall. So you, you just take your time and plan your stuff good, you know. Oh, my gosh. No kidding. And how amazing is it that you're nominated for a Grammy? Now, how did that feel when you were first notified about that? Because I'm like, oh, my God, if somebody told me I was winning an Oscar I, or, like, my, my screenplay was getting accepted, I would be, like, on cloud 27. So how do you accept something like that when somebody says, hey, you're nominated for, like, the biggest award out there? They tell you the truth. I think it's settled in two weeks after. <laughs> 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 Seriously? My, my, manager, my, manager, oh, it did. my manager told me. I'm like, all right. 
So this this, this uh-huh. song, you know, I wrote that I wrote that song in a stand hunting actually. Oh my god! So that's how really? I know. Yes, that's how it came about. So I'm like, I'm writing a song, writing a song. I bring it to my drummer here, Claude, which he produces a lot of music with me, and we start right. producing the song, and the song comes out. So when he ten weeks after we send it, I think I got the news back, and it took two weeks to settle in. I couldn't believe it. After I think I was in the days, and especially when I saw well, my name right. right between. Uh, I think it was between Keith Urban and, jeez, uh, uh, I can't remember her name. Leanne Womack, Carrie Underwood, yeah. I mean, Cam, and those, Cam Underwood, that yeah, song is yeah. amazing. Oh, my God. I mean, listen to that, and Keith amazing. Urban especially. I mean, it's like, oh, my God, could you just imagine how sure you are? And then you are, you're like a megastar. And then you're asking me why I'm nervous <laughs> to talk to you. Hello. Thank you. Not to mention the fact, your music has not only touched here, but of course, folks, just to let you know, this is more of an international thing already, because of course, they're familiar with your work in places like France and Belgium and Germany. So it's not like you're just a 50 state star, so to speak, you know what I'm talking about? You're kind of just leaving your niche all over the place. Look at you sprinkling your little dust around. Holla. <laughs> Pretty impressive, I gotta say. Now, I gotta ask you, okay, and this is just me being the journalist analyst that I am. So, Danny Sylvester is his name, right? So you go to any other place where he has social media, et cetera, and the only place that it's not spelled the same is on your Facebook page. So I've been trying to figure out all, I don't even know how long. You have Either you have two different spellings for your name, or you just don't know how to spell on Facebook. Because <laughs> I'm like, does he know? <laughs> you know that your Facebook name is not like, you know, everything else on all your social media and your website. Just saying. Yes, it's did you know that? <laughs> Yeah, I did, I did. I did, I did, I did, I did. <laughs> and there she did. She points it out. Well, 58,000 people oh listening. Oh, way to go. <laughs> well, no, because no, I, no. I thought I was going nuts. I'm like, why is this guy named this? Because I, like, typed you in, and I'm looking for you, and I'm thinking, there's no guy with this S, because it's Sylvester with an E at the end. But you don't have it like yeah. that on Facebook, and I'm thinking, is this really him? And then I realized, oh, yeah, it is. He's a musician, and, you know, all that jazz. So I'm yeah. like, okay, fine. Plus, you totally don't even sound like <laughs> I mean, you don't even look like how you, just so you know, too. Because, like, if you look at his picture and then you listen to his voice right now, oh, my God, you totally sound different. You wait, you sound wait. You almost sound like Rob Schneider, the actor. Very different. I'm just going to tell you that. Because I'm looking at you. Your website is up, and I'm like, this dude totally doesn't sound like himself. That's okay. Um, I want you to talk a little bit about um, – the song, which is, of course, what we were referencing earlier with the Grams, which is Tailgate Songs. And the reason why is because I'm going to play your version of it so people can listen to it. I always think it's important that my audience should actually hear the person that I'm speaking about because then they'll want to go buy your stuff, and then you'll be a millionaire, and you'll say, I used to know Cindy, and now I'm too good for her. No, just get it. So tell the folks a little bit about what that <laughs> song is about. And, and did you ever, when you were composing this or thinking about doing this and putting it together, were you ever thinking, oh, my God, this is going to read – the status that it did, meaning that it was so successful on so many levels. Never thought. Never thought. Really? I got a lot of, uh, no, I never thought that. No, 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 no. I was just, uh, uh, like I said, in the tree stand, and I'm just like, you know what? I got an idea right now, and I'm going to just roll with it. So I, I, I needed a good a good time song. And tailgate songs, it, it, it's a summer song, you know? Enjoying life. Oh, my just, gosh. So that, that, that's what it is, tailgate songs. And after I came out of the tree, and met my brother Luke, and I started chatting with him. I'm like, Luke, I said, hold that thought. I took a, a pen and paper and started writing the song. I had about three quarters of the song done. Came down here, uh, recorded it with Chloe, just not to forget anything. And uh, mm-hmm. there it went after. Yeah, I never thought it would have got that. Uh, no, <laughs> not a, a Grammy nomination for that. No way. That's amazing. Now tell us the backstory behind the story, so to speak, before I play it, so the folks can kind of uh, prepare for what they're about to listen to. Okay. That's nice. Well, I think so. I, like I said, I think it's important. I, I just did, you know, was there a premise about this, or did you have something in mind in particular when you started writing it? Or, you know, obviously tailgate games kind of sounds just as it is, but talk a little bit about the inspiration behind t- it's tailgate song, Cindy. Oh my God. And it's like not even Friday and there's no wine yet. Go ahead. Yeah, it was, I think it's a lot of the uh, Brooks and Dunn came to mind when I wrote that song, actually. Really? Uh, they got a lot of inspi- yeah, inspiring songs uh, for me anyways. And, uh, right. uh, tailgate songs. Well, everybody loves a tailgate party and everybody's got, I have right. a truck and, I work, I work renovations and stuff, so it, it went oh, from there. Uh, 
No, it's all about uh, being inspired at the moment, I guess, and just rolling with Amen. it. Amen. You betcha, yeah, without yeah. a doubt. That's a perfect intro. Okay, I'm going to let you rest your voice for three minutes and 23 seconds, and we're going to play Danny's song. This is called Tailgate Song. Thank you, sir. My week is done. I'm walking out the door, picking you up in my four by four. It's half past six. I need my little fix. Jump on in so I can kiss your lips. Okay, can I just say that? That totally isn't. That's not you, right? It's like someone else. Because seriously, you don't sound like you either. You don't sound like you. You don't look like you. But I have to tell you, right, folks? Oh, my God. Now do you see and listening to that song again? I know it sounds weird because it's you, right? Because, like, when I go back and listen to my shows, I get weirded out. I'm like, that's not me. But you know what I mean? Listening to that song yeah. is powerful. And it is very Brooks and Dunn-like. It's also very – you know who else it reminds me of is that, that – do you remember the – this is an old guy, by the way, older country called Clay Walker. You remind me of like a Clay Walker, like a Sammy Kershaw, kind of a mix between the two. That is a compliment because I like oh. my old guy. Not that you're old, meaning I like my old country. Don't get too excited. <laughs> um, but no, I, I do. I think it's it's just it's a neat sound. You know what I mean? And it's simple. People can relate to it. I seriously find constantly that people love music that they can relate to. It, whether it's an, an experience or a tragedy or if it's a feeling or an emotion, et cetera, it, it's just neat. You know what I mean? It's just amazing to me that it is people can put music like that together. And it can be very touching. And, and you can relate to that person. And then you say, you know what? I like – all it takes is one song, and I don't think people realize that. You take one or two couple touchy or catchy songs, 
And people are kind of lured in and they want to know you and they want to know more and they want to get more. And lucky for you that they want that, obviously. And like I said, he got beat by the cute stick because he's Canadian. So, of course, he looks good. People want to come out and see him and listen to him. He's got the dream combination there. Um, now, I don't want to forget to mention that the next upcoming gig is located and it's called Pem. Am I saying this right? Pembroke, Ontario at the Lasso Bar. December Pembroke, 9th. Ontario at like, the Lasso Bar. Yes, that's right. Yes, at the Lasso Bar. Now, is there a particular time in mind? Do they need to get tickets, et cetera? Or could you give us some information about that for those that might want to attend? It's on a Friday, and it starts at 10. And, no, you just show up. Usually the, the that venue is pretty packed, and we have a, a hell of a show there. Lots of fun. Oh, I, I imagine. How could you not have a hell of a show if you're there? Duh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure all it takes is you being there, and that's pretty much about it. Now, there's a couple well, business no. things that I need to take care of here. I need the folks – well, I need – I'm going to read off a bunch of this, and I want to just make sure that I have right. not forgotten to um, – I haven't forgotten anything. So just take a listen and let me know. The gentleman that I've been talking to this last almost hour, his name is Danny, and it's spelled – is it pronounced Sylvester or Sylvestri? I wasn't quite sure. Sylvester. It is Sylvester, so I'm right. Okay, so it's Danny, and yes. Danny's last name is – and just so you know, this Danny, just so you know how to spell your name on Facebook. It's S-Y-L-V-E-S-T-R-E. Because when you go back and look, you're going to laugh because look on Facebook. Your name is not this. But honestly, folks, it is S-Y-L-V-E-S-T-R-E. He, of course, has a Facebook yes. personal page, which is his name. He also has the Danny Sylvester Band, and that's all one word, and that's an actual Facebook page itself. There's also a Facebook group called Heart of Rock, and that's heart as in heart of rock. He is on Twitter, and that's at Danny Sylvester. His website is dannysylvester.com. He is also on YouTube, iTunes, CD Baby, and SoundCloud. Have I missed anything? Instagram. Instagram. Oh, crap. You know what? You know why I didn't say Instagram? Because when I click on your Instagram, it doesn't go to Instagram. Did you know that? Oh. That's why I didn't say that. Uh Uh-huh. But you brought it up on air, so let's talk about it. Yeah, definitely. When we get off the air, check it out. Because here's when, like, I'm on Instagram. So when you click on my name and you go to the Instagram, it takes you to the Instagram format. When you click on your Instagram, it goes to another format that's not, do you know what I mean? That's not you. It's it's a different okay. format. Like, it's you, but it's not Instagram. So that's why I didn't mention it. I just didn't want to, you know oh, what okay. I mean? Well, to that out, yeah, <laughs> I didn't yeah. want to steer people in the wrong direction. Okay. No, no. the very last <laughs> – that's okay. The very last thing that we do on my show before I let you go is I get to tell you what I think of you. So this is my opportunity to kind of just tell the listening audience, hey, this is what I think of this guy. So before I do that, I want to not forget one thing. Joyce – and I, I, I'm hoping I say this name right. It's Lamarche. Is that right? Lamarche? Lamarche? Joyce Lamarche. 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 Do you know Lamarche. how it's pronounced? Yes. Lamarche. Okay. Joseph. You miss Joyce Lamarche. That's right. If it wasn't for her and I being on this absolutely lovely PR page, I would have never even known that Danny Sylvester existed, let alone have the wonderful opportunity to spend almost an hour with him while laughing at him and kind of poking fun at him. But the long story yeah. short, Joyce, is um, without you, I wouldn't have this man. And without this man, I would not have a show because I have to tell you, some of the best talent comes on my program. So, Joyce, this is a huge hug and a huge shout-out saying thank you, thank you, thank you so much for booking this um, and uh, partnering us together. Now, you, young man, I'm just going to have you stay quiet for about the next two or three minutes. And the reason I do this last little part at the end of my show is because I like people to know my intuition and my impressions of you. Because first of all, as a journalist, I investigated you. Now I had the chance to spend some personal time with you. So I want everyone to have the same lasting impression of you that I have. And I don't want to forget to remind you that once we finish up with the show, in about two hours, this becomes an archived episode. So if you want to let your fans and followers know that um, somewhere around 3, 4 o'clock today, they can access it today or anytime all year round. It's a permanent episode. So you can come back and take a look at yourself. Or I should say... Go back and listen to yourself, and you try telling me you look like how you sound, because you don't. Just going to throw that out there. <laughs> so the, these are my impressions of Mr. Danny Sylvester. Um, as I said, and as you heard me just say, I just got introduced to him through a friend by the name of Joyce, who obviously is in PR. She comes to me, and she talks to me about this guy, and she's like, he's absolutely phenomenal. He's got the sound of a country guy, but more so leaning towards the rock side. You're going to love me. He's sensational. And she was absolutely right. The moment I knew I was going to like you was the first five minutes I started researching you because his attitude is very blanket 
blanket across the board when it comes to everything. I've read articles about you. I've seen you perform. I've watched your videos, and I've heard your music. And there's one thing that resonates across the board with all of it, which is I am a serious musician with serious, somewhat serious messages in the course of my song, but I'm here to have a good time, and I'm here to give you a good time. It, it resonates across the board the minute you walk onto a stage or you start smiling or you start talking about your music. It's like this beam of light, and I've seen this so many times with musicians. It's the reason I love hosting you. You present something and bring something to the table that the rest of us don't have, which is you have a beautiful voice, which brings across a beautiful message, whether it's entertaining, amusing, funny, touching, memorable. You touch our lives with the music that you bring out there. I think that you're a highly intelligent, very funny, very amusing individual. I also think that your music is original, even though it might have some of the background that it relates to, as we talked about, with Don or some of the older classic country. What's nice about you is that you have a Canadian sound that's mixed with a clash of country rock. And also, as you listen close enough, and this is just my impression, I almost feel like you need to have a banjo in the backyard with you playing along with everything else. Because I, I think you're versatile. I think you're funny. I think you're wonderful. And most importantly, the coolest part about being in my show is at some point in time, I'm going to knock on your Canadian door. And I'm going to say, hey, I'm doing another film this year, and I'm wondering if you'd like to contribute some music. So I want to say thank you, Danny Sylvester, for coming to my show. I've had an absolutely wonderful time. You're probably one of the coolest musicians I've interviewed in a long time, and I hope that you know that my door is open to you anytime you want to come back. That's oh, what thank I think you so much, Lindy. Oh, you're that's, quite that's, welcome. Yeah, it was lovely. I'm overwhelmed a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> that happens all the time. Every time somebody comes on my show, they're like, oh, my God, you're so – some of them cry, some of them laugh, and I'm like, don't cry. I'm like, oh, you don't cry, I'm good. It's like one of those things. But it's honest. And truth be told, just so you know, this is the only part of the show that's not scripted. It's the very last part. So it comes right off the top of my head. Everything else is journalistic value, by the way. And I am crossing mm-hmm. my fingers on the tailgate song that does tremendously well, obviously has already. Keep me posted on the I Quit thing and let me know. And do let me know over the future when you're playing in Canada because I know that I'm up for um, – there's a TV platform there that's – having me audition to be a host on a television show for Canada somewhere. So if I get lucky enough in the near future to get out there soon enough, I can come to a gig. I would love to meet you in person. You'd be the first one on my list, Cindy. Thank you so much. Oh, you're awesome. Oh, absolutely. Thanks so much for taking the time to tune in, and we'll talk to you soon, and you have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks again for doing this. You as well, Cindy. Bye-bye now. All right, dear. Take care. Folks, is that phenomenal or what? As I said, Daniel Sylvester is his name. Absolutely lovely. Like I said, go take a look on Facebook and you'll see what I'm talking about. He sounds just so very different. And I don't know, again, if it's that Canadian thing or what. I, I got to say, lovely guy. Definitely. One more time again, thanks so much to Joyce. Joyce, I can't thank you enough. We really did have an absolutely wonderful time. And I meant what I said. Tremendous talent comes on my show. Thank you for blessing me with another wonderful musician. One more time, folks. YouTube, iTunes, CD Baby. SoundCloud. His Facebook groups are uh, both Heart of Rock and also the Danny Sylvester Band. He has a Facebook personal page. And again, we'll spell that last name for you. It's S-Y-L-V-E-S-T-R-E. So that's his personal page, website, DannySylvester.com, and also on Twitter, at Danny and Sylvester. Again, to those of you in the Ontario area, Pembroke, Pembroke, I hope I said that right, Ontario, it's the Lasso Bar, and that's December 9th. Sorry, I forgot to ask him one time, but I'm going to guess if you've been to a bar gig, you're looking at like 7, 8 o'clock at night. Thanks again, Danny, for coming on the show. Again, tomorrow, 5 o'clock Central Standard Time, Scott H. Silverman, CNN Hero Recipient Award. Big thanks to Steve Joyner on that one as well in advance. Okay, kids, I'm off to go get my kids uh, and rest my arms before the therapist and everyone else yells at me. Thanks so much to the listening audience for listening in and taking the time to support me and my guests, and we'll see you tomorrow afternoon. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog... Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. 
What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.